Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. Let us get started with today's learning. Term 1 Revision, Life Science Grade 11. The diagram below represents the structure of a bacteriophage. Question. Identify and explain the following parts, namely A, B, C, D, E and F. Based on the common structure of a bacteriophage, the labeled parts can be identified as follows. A is the protein shield. The protein shield, also known as the capsid, is a protective covering that surrounds the genetic material of the bacteriophage. It is made up of protein molecules that fit together in a structured way, forming a strong outer shell. This shield has two main functions. It protects the viral DNA from damage, and it ensures the DNA is safely delivered into the host bacterium during infection. Without this shield, the viral DNA could be destroyed by environmental factors before it reaches its target. B is the DNA. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is the genetic material of a bacteriophage. It carries the instructions needed to take control of a bacterial cell and produce new virus particles. The DNA is stored inside the capsid, protein shield, until the bacteriophage finds a suitable host. Once attached to a bacterial cell, the virus injects its DNA into the host, where it hijacks the bacterial machinery to replicate and assemble new bacteriophages. This process continues until the bacterial cell bursts, releasing more viruses to infect other bacteria. C is known as the collar. The collar is a ring-like structure found in some bacteriophages, positioned between the capsid and the tail. Its main function is to provide stability by keeping these two parts firmly connected. In some cases, the collar may also help guide the DNA as it moves from the capsid, through the tail, and into the bacterial cell. By reinforcing the structure of the virus, the collar ensures that the infection process happens smoothly and efficiently. D is the shield. The term shield refers to any protective structure in the bacteriophage, but it mainly refers to the capsid. This shield plays a crucial role in keeping the virus's genetic material safe until the right conditions for infection are met. It ensures that the DNA is not damaged by external factors such as enzymes, radiation, or changes in temperature before the bacteriophage finds a bacterial host. E. Base plate. The base plate is an essential component of the bacteriophage's tail, located at the very end of the tail structure. It functions like a docking station, allowing the virus to attach securely to the surface of a bacterial cell. Once the bacteriophage is attached, the base plate plays a key role in triggering the injection of viral DNA into the host cell. It undergoes structural changes that help push the DNA from the capsid through the tail and into the bacterium. F is the fiber. The fibers are long, thread-like extensions that project from the base plate. These tail fibers act like sensors, helping the bacteriophage detect and recognize its specific bacterial host. When the fibers find the right type of bacterium, they attach to special receptors on the bacterial surface. This ensures that the bacteriophage does not waste its DNA on the wrong target. Once attached, the fibers help the bacteriophage hold onto the bacterium while the base plate prepares to inject the viral DNA. Question. Why are viruses referred to as being acellular? Viruses are referred to as being acellular because they do not have a cell structure. They lack a nucleus, cytoplasm, or organelles and consist only of genetic material, DNA, or RNA, enclosed in a protein coat, making them non-cellular entities. Question. State ONE characteristic of viruses that qualifies them as A. Living things, viruses are considered to be living things because they can reproduce, but only inside a host cell. They also die when their host is destroyed or when exposed to unfavorable conditions b non-living things viruses qualify as non-living things as they do not feed or respire because they lack cellular structures such as organelles and enzymes needed for metabolism give the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions question 
The gut that runs through an organism with two openings is called a. The correct answer is a through gut, which refers to a digestive system that has two openings, a mouth at one end and an anus at the other. This type of digestive system allows for a one-way flow of food through the body. Question, the tree that shows evolutionary relationships among different species is called a. The correct answer is phylogenetic tree. A phylogenetic tree is a diagram that represents how species have evolved from common ancestors over time. It shows branches where closely related species are grouped together, helping scientists understand evolutionary connections. Question. A group of plants that have seeds enclosed in an ovary are known as. The correct answer is angiosperms. Angiosperms are flowering plants where the seeds develop inside a fruit or ovary. This protective structure helps in seed dispersal and provides an advantage over gymnosperms, which have exposed seeds. Question. The concentration of sense organs at the anterior end of an animal leading to the formation of a head is called. The correct answer is cephalization. Cephalization is the development of a distinct head region where sensory structures, such as eyes and a brain, are concentrated. This adaptation is common in bilaterally symmetrical animals and helps improve movement and environmental awareness. Question. The cell walls of most fungi are mainly composed of. The correct answer is chitin. Fungal cell walls contain chitin, a tough and flexible structural component. Unlike plants, which have cellulose-based cell walls, fungi rely on chitin for protection and structural support. Question. Viruses are referred to as being acellular because they. The correct answer is, they do not have a cell structure. Viruses lack a nucleus, cytoplasm, and organelles, consisting only of genetic material, DNA, or RNA, enclosed in a protein coat. This makes them non-cellular entities that depend on a host cell for replication. Question. Phylum of all animals with a vertebral column in adults. The correct answer is chordata. The phylum chordata includes all animals that possess a vertebral column, backbone, at some stage in their life cycle. This group includes fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Question. Transfer of pollen from an anther to the stigma. The correct answer is pollination. Pollination is the process by which pollen grains are transferred from the anther, male reproductive part, to the stigma, female reproductive part, of a flower, enabling fertilization to occur. Question. The type of reproduction in plants that produces offspring with identical genetic composition. The correct answer is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction occurs when plants produce offspring without the involvement of gametes, that is sperm and egg cells. Study the diagram below showing the arrangement of body tissues. Question. The type of symmetry shown in the diagram above is called. The correct answer is bilateral symmetry. This type of symmetry means that the body can be divided into two equal halves along a single plane, with one mirror image side on either side of the central axis. This is typical of many animals, including humans. Question. Explain one advantage of the symmetry mentioned in the question above. The correct answer is bilateral symmetry allows for cephalization. This means that the concentration of sensory organs and nervous tissue is located at the front of the organism, forming a distinct head. The advantage of cephalization is that it enhances the animal's ability to detect prey and danger more effectively, making it easier to interact with its environment. Question. Identify the type of skeleton of the organism shown in the diagram above. The correct answer is exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is a hard external structure that provides support and protection to the organism. It is commonly found in arthropods, such as insects and crustaceans. Question. State two disadvantages of the type of skeleton mentioned in question above. The correct answer is. 1. Exoskeleton restricts animal growth. Since the exoskeleton is rigid and does not grow with the animal, the organism needs to shed it periodically, 
which can be limiting for its growth. 2. Exoskeleton requires molting which makes the animal vulnerable. During the process of shedding or molting its exoskeleton, the animal is exposed and more susceptible to predators. The diagram below shows the branch of the pine tree. Question, to which plant group does the pine tree belong? The correct answer is gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are a group of seed-producing plants that do not form flowers or fruits. Instead, their seeds develop on the surface of cones. Question, identify one visible reason for your answer in the question above. The correct answer is presence of cones. Gymnosperms, such as pine trees, produce cones that contain their reproductive structures, which is a distinguishing feature of this plant group. Question, explain two significances of the shape of the leaves in the diagram above. The correct answer is, one, leaves are needle-shaped, reducing the surface area exposed to the sun. This adaptation minimizes water loss by limiting the amount of transpiration that occurs. 2. Leaves have a thick cuticle. The thick, waxy coating on the leaves helps reduce water loss and protects the plant from harsh environmental conditions, such as cold and drought. Question. State the disadvantages of wind pollination. The correct answer is. 1. Pollination can only occur during windy conditions. Wind pollination is entirely dependent on air movement to transport pollen between plants. If there is no wind, pollen remains stagnant, significantly reducing the chances of fertilization. This reliance on environmental factors makes wind pollination unpredictable and less reliable than pollination by animals or insects. 2 requires a large amount of pollen to be produced. Since wind disperses pollen randomly, a large portion of it is lost or fails to reach the right plant. To compensate for this inefficiency, wind-pollinated plants must produce excessive amounts of pollen to increase the likelihood of successful fertilization. This high pollen production demands substantial energy investment from the plant. 3. Pollen is transported randomly, reducing efficiency. In wind pollination, pollen is released into the air without a set direction, meaning much of it may never reach a compatible flower or cone. This randomness makes wind pollination far less efficient compared to insect or animal pollination, where pollen transfer is more direct and targeted. 4. Requires reproductive structures to capture pollen. Because wind pollinated plants do not rely on pollinators, their flowers or cones must have specialized adaptations to trap airborne pollen. Many have sticky surfaces or feathery stigmas that improve the chances of capturing pollen from the air. Without these adaptations, most pollen would be blown away, making fertilization difficult. 5. Pollen may land on flowers or cones of different species, preventing fertilization. Wind pollination does not discriminate between species so pollen may settle on flowers or cones of unrelated plants. Since each species has a unique genetic composition, pollen landing on an incompatible plant is unlikely to result in successful fertilization, further reducing the effectiveness of wind pollination. To access more learning and exam preparation materials, go to www.acemyexams.coza. This link is also in the video description below. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, and be the first to know when we upload new videos.